Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk about whether some journalists should be going to jail. And spoiler alert, the answer is yes. I'm talking about a couple of articles that were put out by La Presse, which is a Quebecois newspaper, so everything is in French. I'll try to translate where necessary. But these were a couple of articles that were basically put out for the purpose of pushing more gun control. And in the process, they commit several serious firearms offenses. Let's talk about that. So the first article here is one where, and they start out by doing some good journalism, but they quickly go off the rails. They identified a Facebook group where they found that a bunch of firearms were being sold likely illegally. And had they done a report on that and perhaps said, hey, we've identified this, we took a bunch of notes, and then contacted the police, and then they could have reported, we found this group, we, you know, and the following people have been arrested and are facing charges. That would have been good journalism. Instead, what they decided to do is, let's buy a gun illegally, which is not how you should go about doing this. And then they proceed to write a very extensive newspaper article or online newspaper article where they confess to various crimes. So they've got a picture of the SKS rifle that they purchased, as well as, you know, magazines and so forth. And basically what they identified is in this Facebook group, people were selling guns and not requiring the full transfer process that is required under Canadian law. Now, here's the problem. If you don't go through that transfer process, then you know that this gun is not being sold to you legally, and you know it's being obtained by a crime. They've got some real issues there. So they take pictures of this and they note, they say, hey, don't worry, our reporter has a possession and acquisition license. So they're allowed to own a gun. They're allowed to own an SKS. The problem is, is that that doesn't mean that you're allowed to illegally buy one, especially where you know that there is an illegal sale going on. So that's our first article. The second article is this one. And this one is titled, Eight Seconds to Obtain an Illegal Magazine. So Canada restricts the size of firearm magazines. For a semi-automatic rifle, it's limited to five rounds. For a handgun, 10 rounds. Typically, there are exceptions. I'm not going to get into all of that. But the article starts out with, and I'll just try to get it right on the screen so it's easy to see. Eight little seconds. I'm not sure what a little second is because a second is a defined measurement of time, but eight little seconds. That's exactly the time it took us to transform uh, these three magazines of five round capacity into prohibited 30 round magazines. Okay, so what they're doing here is they're confessing to crime. Bill C-21, which isn't in force yet, has a specific offense for converting a handgun magazine to take more rounds than it's allowed. But that law is stupid because it's unnecessary. We don't need Bill C-21 for this. This is a crime now. And they admit that they intentionally modify these things in order to make the article which you're not allowed to do. There is no exception for journalists here. They've just told the world that they are committing a crime and that's a problem. So let's talk about what kinds of crimes they might be on the hook for because there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, so I guess now I'm mostly going to focus on the magazine issue and that's because things get a little more messy on the purchase of the rifle. Um, and that's because it gets into some of Quebec's laws and so forth. But really, I'm going to focus on the magazine because I think there we have some clear cut issues. And the first one is just possession of a prohibited device and knowing that they're, you know, knowing that they're not allowed to because they did know that they actually wrote that into the article. They're like, these are banned. We know these are banned. And in the course of modifying this, they end up in possession of the modified item. So again, you don't need the whole, you don't need a law specifically addressing that in order to cover this. So let's have a look. Possession of a prohibited weapon, device, or ammunition, knowing its possession is unauthorized, which they do. Subject to subsection four, 
every person commits an offense who possesses a prohibited weapon or restricted weapon, a prohibited device, and these magazines are prohibited devices, they put that in the article, other than a replica firearm or any prohibited ammunition, knowing that the person is not the holder of a license under which the person may possess it. And they also are not the holder of a license that allows them to possess prohibited devices. Punishment. Every person who commits an offense under subsection 1 or 2 is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not more than 10 years. Now, I'm just going to say, based on some of the past case law on this charge, I do not expect that they would be getting uh, a 10-year sentence. In fact, I don't think they'd be getting jail at all. I suspect that they would be getting probation. But, you know, this is, um, this is a pretty serious charge here right at the outset. The courts have not, and the courts have rejected um, such defenses as, oh, I just was curious, or I just wanted to see. There have been various people who have ordered products online that are illegal, saying that I was just curious about this item, and that's been rejected as a defense. That's not something that has been allowed. But there is a much more serious offense that applies to this, and that is the charge of weapons trafficking. So let's pull that up here. Every person commits an offense who manufactures or transfers, whether or not for consideration. So consideration is whether you you get money for it, right? Uh, but manufactures is critical here because they are essentially making a prohibited magazine out of the material of a non-prohibited magazine. So a prohibited firearm, restricted firearm, non-restricted firearm, prohibited weapon, restricted weapon, prohibited device, any ammunition or any prohibited ammunition, so we're again talking about a prohibited device, knowing that the person is not authorized to do so under the Firearms Act or any other Act of Parliament or any regulations made under any Act of Parliament. And I can tell you, we'll go over it really briefly, but there are exceptions for various people. Journalists are not on that list. There is no reporter exception here. Now the punishment uh, notes that where it's a, where the object in question is, and the list includes a prohibited device, they are guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 10 years, and to a minimum punishment of imprisonment for a term of, in the case of a first offense, three years. Now, I'm just going to say, this is probably a set of facts that, um, that would result in that three years being found to be perhaps unconstitutional. I suspect that the court would throw out the three years with respect to these particular instances or that the prosecutors would plead this down. But I do think it is appropriate that people get some jail time on this one because they had very intentionally committed a crime for money because, of course, they're making revenue off this, uh, off this article. So this is not a crime that was just committed like out of curiosity. This is straight up something that people were doing for money. And that's a problem. Now, you might say, wait, wait, they're just reporters. Why should they face charges? And the thing is, is that I'm just a reporter isn't a blanket defense to committing a crime. In the context of firearms, there are very specific exempted persons. There are a list of people. And, you know, that is covered by section 11707 through 09. And so this is public officers are allowed to do various things, pre-clearance officers, so customs and so forth, individuals acting for a police force, Canadian forces and visiting forces. Um, that's not what's happening here. They're not acting on behalf of that. Employees of business with license. I don't see any indication that that's the case. Um, employees of carriers, so like the mail, etc., and museum employees. None of this seems to apply here. I don't see an exemption here. And I mean, maybe they have one and that can be sorted out, but certainly the police should be investigating this and looking into it. There are other exceptions for police who are acting as undercover officers and so forth. There are blanket uh, protections there for people who are engaged in undercover operations or as agents of the police who are engaged in these undercover operations. And those require very specific rules that are not covered here. You know, this is 
anyone who is required or authorized by law to do anything in the administration or enforcement of the law as a private person, as a peace officer, in aid of a peace officer, or by virtue of their office. Well, we're already throwing out this section because it says required or authorized by law to do these things. These reporters were neither of those, so they're just not covered on that. So, and again, when we talk about the reporter issue, like reporters can't say, hey, look, I found this site that is illegally selling drugs and I bought a kilo of heroin for giggles because it would be easy to write that article. Or I found this site that was distributing um, bad pictures of children and I obtained some of those bad pictures of children and that was, you know, that was just for the purpose of reporting, so I shouldn't be charged. The police would be charging them in a hot second. The other person that would be charged really fast if they did this is me. Um, I do legal commentary, legal education on this channel, and I can tell you that right now I'm in the process of applying for a business firearms license because sometimes people have questions that I can't really answer without actually being able, without going through the proper steps. I can tell you this is costing me literally thousands of dollars, not hundreds, thousands of dollars. And it's taken like two years. You got to go through those proper steps. And even then I probably couldn't do some of the things they're doing here. But if I came on a video and said, hey, I have modified some magazines to be illegal magazines, the police would be at my door. You'd be hearing them knocking in the background right now as, you know, saying, we're coming in. Why they aren't already kicking in the doors of La Presse, because these, these articles have been out for a couple of days now, is beyond me. It seems to me that they have full confessions, and that should be more than enough to get a warrant to go in and seize every piece of electronics that might have evidence as to who all was involved in this because it wouldn't just be the reporter who did this but also potentially whoever approved this story might be a party to this um, there might be all sorts of people who could be charged potentially the organization itself la press as an organization might be on the hook to be able to be charged there are some other examples that um, that come to mind and one of them is you get people who are on youtube or various other places um, doing sort of keto hunting. And so what they'll do is they'll go online and they'll pretend to be children in order to bring somebody out to meet that child. And then they'll expose and shame that person. One such person was Mr. Nasser, who was recently convicted in Canada with regards to those activities for possession of I'm not sure if YouTube will let me use the word, um, CP. And the reason why is that the Canadian definition of CP includes text descriptions. And so when the guy reached out and was having those textual communications with people where he was pretending to be a child, he was creating CP. And the court said, that's not, that's not a defense. Even though you say that you are engaged in reporting, journalism and that you are engaged in some sort of public service that's still not a defense they said that was mitigating on sentence but he ended up getting house arrest so if he's getting convicted why isn't la press facing charges here is it because their position is one that largely supports government action because that shouldn't be a reason um we should have equality before the law, whether you support the government or oppose the government. Either of those things should should matter. But I feel like I'd be more likely to be charged based on being critical of the government than they are for being supportive of the government's uh, bans. This to me is um, this to me is an obvious one. If they've got a they've got a confession and it's basically signed, sealed, and delivered, so. Will the police take action on this? Will they actually go and investigate this and take those steps? I don't know. Um, I think they should be, but I can't say. Um, another thing to consider about this is one of the reasons why Mr. Nasser um, is one of the reasons why the police were keen to go after him and people like him is that in fact, um, 
people interfering to do their own sort of investigations can cause real problems for police investigations. There have been several instances where people who have been engaged in that sort of uh, pedo hunting behavior online have disrupted an active police investigation, potentially resulting in somebody committing various serious crimes getting away with it. In this case, the reporter, I'm just going to say, um, a lot of these like groups where people are selling things illegally are very police heavy. And a lot of the time the police are aware of things and they might not be arresting people right away because if you arrest people right away, then you get one person. Whereas if you keep going, they might get lots of people. If you're buying a gun illegally online, you are probably talking to a police officer. If you are selling a gun illegally online, the person buying it is probably a police officer. And if you are reporting on this and you're not involving the police, you are quite possibly disrupting the actions of police officers to stop weapons trafficking. So good job, LaPresse. You probably have helped criminals. Um, yeah. So this provides some really strong reasons why the police don't like this behavior usually and might lay charges. We'll see if they do that in the La Presse case. As I mentioned, I think they should, but, you know, because they'd charge anyone else for the same thing. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this to be interesting or educational. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters. Uh, please hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. All of those help. So at the $50 level, the CCFR, Canada's National Farms Association, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association, as well as Lembas for the Elf. And at the $20 level, Lindsay Metcalf, Larry Kalniak, Kyle Fox, Here's a Coin Legal Witcher, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Vicky, and Dorky Dane. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters, who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. Hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.